So we're going to be playing Space Harrier. But we are going to be playing the American version. Because Chris Butler was allowed uh, about half an hour, maybe less than that, just to add some uh, raster bars for the floor effect. Uh, and it works fine in, on the PAL C64. So there's no point uh, doing the British one that's got the plain floor, which is a bit... Mm, really don't give you a sense of uh, movement at all. So, five it is then. No, S. You, Wally. Damn it, I thought all the loading had happened. As Irish by lighter light. That sounds a bit weird, but grammatically it's correct. Like an idiot, I didn't try this. Um, Jesus Christ, why does it take so long? Mind you, I suppose you can't load the actual version because you've got to pick. So now we have to wait mm, probably another 30 seconds. Yeah, not even that. So it's obviously compacted. Trainers, unlimited lives. Uh, well, if he hasn't got invincibility, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, unlimited time. Collision off, yes. Yes, with a rapid... No, actually. Does something weird then. Uh, starting level is one, yeah. Commodore key for level skip, yeah. Just so we can see different colours. This is Chris Butler's first uh, Sega sprite scaler conversion. So, you know, you have to remember he wrote this probably in a couple of weeks. You know, not like uh, a couple of half decades, like the Atari version. So that's the first thing you say, oh shit, compared to the Atari version. Well, this game is written within a time frame for Elite to make loads of money, not necessarily Chris Butler. And we're playing a version that I couldn't have bought legally because it wasn't released on tape anyway. I couldn't have even imported an original copy from the USA. Those are very odd colours for the uh, raster effect. The arcade machine is very colourful and very pastel-y, which is what the C64 has in abundance. Muted pastel shades. If you're too stupid to turn the uh, colour up on your TV, ugh, Enough already with your rubbish palette jokes. Right, so... Which one is actually plugged in? Where's the other zip stick gone? There's a zip stick missing here. Okay. Right, it's there. So, we're going to be using a good one. Hopefully it's joystick talk to, and it is. True arcade gameplay, got a cigarette in the hand. I think the rasters are more or less going the same speed as the, uh, you know, the characters on the screen zooming into you. It's really the, uh, you know, the raster bars that are the problem. So if you could change those to a different colour, like uh, light blue and uh, cyan or something, be a lot better actually. It's better than the Amstrad version though, which was a terrible, terrible bit of coding. I think they've got outline. They're like wire they've got a fucking wireframe version of Space Harrier. With a couple of software sprites sprinkled here and there in A bit like sprinkled the shit on the uh, side of your toilet in it. So, you know, it's better than the Spectrum version, 
I feel like I'm uh, fucking using nuclear hardened equipment that's been damaged by fucking nuclear radiation. When I look at the spectrum screenshot. Damn it, the old roll up's gone out. Yeah, using the same colour for the rasters as the uh, pillars, probably not a good idea. Let's see if we can get a nice colour combination. It's really about the colour combination for me. They're all bloody grey. Why is he doing them all grey? As long as it's not the pillars again. Right, okay. Looks a bit like the uh, forest level on um, Locus Esprit Challenge 2 or 1, I suppose. I can't remember if it's in. Ah, it might only be in the third one, the one I'm thinking of. <coughs> I would have changed a few of the uh, sprite colour choices myself. Your sprite looks fine. And he, his animation for running is actually quite good. Uh, but some of the other sprite colours are a bit ColecoVision, MSX. You know, they're like one colour. They're clearly in high res. Uh, not in high res, sorry. They're multi-colour mode. Maybe they're not actually sprites. Maybe only you and the uh, missiles are sprites. I don't know. But yeah, some odd colour choices going on, I think they're background graphics. The trees are fine, but it's everything else. Alright, seven minutes of space area, let's uh, sum this one up then. Uh, it moves quite impressive for uh, a first generation Sega conversion. Sound is absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that at all. And the dragon is probably the most impressive enemy. He actually looks quite good. Obviously, uh, you know, don't go at like 25 frames per second. Probably more like 10. But, you know, for a couple of weeks coding for a first attempt by Chris Butler, this isn't bad, you know that? And again with a great. It's used quite dark colours, dark grey and medium grey, brown and orange, whereas the arcade is more pastel-y I think. Maybe so you could see like these graphics here. Yeah, these, these are definitely uh, characters that I'm zooming in. Now these must be sprites I'm guessing. White turquoise, the ones on the floor, the white faces, they're not. So. Now you can't shoot the pillars. Well, this is a little bit more like the arcade, except for the steep brown background. They could add light blue or something else, or light red. Pretty trippy actually. But they're quite, the colours are very BBC Micro. Uh, maybe that's the limitation of the uh, screen mode he's using to keep the speed up. I don't think he's mixing uh, high res and uh, low res, you know, multicolor fat pixel mode. So, yeah, it is what it is. It could have been a lot worse. Could have been like the Amstrad or the Spectrum version.